perfect. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome both of you to our um, podcast. So, this is a recent initiative that we started um, on behalf of Bitsa Pulse called Bits Beacon, where we uh, basically interview distinguished alumni um, and distinguished in various walks of life. Because as Bitsians, we know people are very diverse, even though we come from an engineering background. So, it's really exciting to have these conversations with distinguished alumni from different fields. And today we are really honored to have the two of you here join us. Um, so this is for the audience. So we're actually honored to have um, with us Arun and Gautam. Uh, both of them have graduated uh, in 2017 from Bitspilani. And um, they are now revolutionizing the space of EV or electrical vehicles in India. And they've co-founded uh, Race Energy, um, recently, which is a deep tech battery swapping company and is pioneering advanced swappable batteries and a smart swapping network for all segments of EVs. Uh, in fact, recently, their groundbreaking work has earned them a spot on the prestigious um, Forbes 30 under 30 Asia list. So we really extend a very, very hearty welcome to both of you and are very excited to learn more about your journey. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Nabia, for having us here. Uh, happy to share our sort of experiences and uh, uh, life at Bits as well and how it sort of helped us uh, build this company. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, we just, can start. Go ahead, Nivya. Yeah, I just, just wanted to uh, congratulate both of you to make it to for Forbes 30 under 30 this time. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Once. Yeah. We'll get more into the details of that in the future segment. <laughs> So I'll start with the first segment, which is basically a little bit of a warm up. And we want to know a bit more about your childhood and your life at BITS. So, um, yeah, so would you, any one of you can take it up. So we just basically want to first learn a bit more about some key memories or experiences from your childhood that you think are crucial in making you as a person. Dr. Me, want to go first or? I'll uh, take it. It's fine. I mean, uh, now specifically from childhood, uh, I mean, if you see the journey that we have been through, I think uh, I can speak for both of us. Both of us have been uh, really great fans of motorsports and, uh, you know, racing uh, since our childhood, since we were back in school. And, you know, that's that's the line that's carried through our college life as well. I think we talk a little more about it. Uh, and that's something that stuck to us, uh, the passion for building something new in automotives and, uh, you know, taking them uh, to a large scale uh, right from college where we were part of the, uh, you know, Inspired Carters racing team. Um, and to this date, we both of us follow, uh, you know, Formula One racing uh, at home, at, uh, you know, every weekend uh, in and out. So that that's something that's uh, stuck with us, uh, I, I feel, uh, from the beginning. And that's one uh, reason that you know we we've named our company race as well so uh, that's that's something that stuck around yeah yeah i think i think uh, uh, we kind of used to pretty much have share the same sort of classroom or um, you know coaching center in that sense uh, from from our ninth standard so that was back in 2009 uh, but i think i think what got us together also was uh, the the love for motorsports i think I think back in back before Drive to Survive came, there were very uh, few fans of uh, Formula One, so it was very hard to find someone who could talk about it. So I think, I think, I think sometime around twenty twelve or twenty thirteen is is when we kind of like you know sort of uh, started being part of similar groups, and uh, this was even before joining Bits and and uh, luckily I think uh, uh, including us and a few of us from the same class uh, got into Bits together. And uh, being uh, in a in a new college, a new environment for you know, obviously we were kids back then. It's it's always nice to have someone whom you know from uh, before. So we got along well from there. And then you know, uh, me, Gautam, and some other friends. Even today, I mean, I think like all of us still have that uh, inspired Carters and uh, Formula One in 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 common. And uh, uh, and Fiji, which is where we studied in in Hyderabad, uh, in common. And that's con that continues till this date. So it's been about. 13, 14 years uh, since then. So it's a very strong uh, uh, bond and, you know, uh, thread that kind of links everything together. That's uh, interesting that you mentioned Fiji. So I also 
grew up in Hyderabad and also studied like my 11th and 12th were in Fiji. So you guys were in um, Saifabad or Kukatpalli? Which one? So first, okay. first year was in Saifabad and yeah, the next was in uh, Narayan. 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 Oh, Narayan. so you guys were then the, the top batch, <laughs> as they call it. ஒரு <laughs> we we always fought them i don't think there was that was all that was a big uh, challenge in that sense uh, and have you gone back these, yeah some of these people were smarter i think gautam was smarter <laughs> in the sense so i think he could he could probably spare more time uh, i didn't do well once i got into that section but but i think yeah i think it was all you know uh, we could, we were still kids so we all, always had the time and once we got into college i think at least for me in bits that was the last exam that i gave uh, to, to get it to inspire carters and i never studied for any other exam so uh, again i hope this is not being watched by a lot of uh, students <laughs> but that's not a right uh, thing to mention but that was the last uh, uh, exam i really prepared for uh, the inspired carters exam and i never kind of like uh, studied a lot and that's where you know sort of bits uh, gave a lot of flexibility we will we'll come to that but that's how it translated yeah great so uh, uh, so as you guys said uh, you guys knew each other even before joining bets so uh, and then you got you both got into uh, bets pelani and then uh, you had different uh, you know uh, streams uh, gautam you are a chemical engineer by training and arun you are uh, a mechanical engineer so um, i would like to know when was the idea to uh, collaborate for race energy born who wants so, to uh, want to... I, i think i'll just uh, add some more to that uh, i am a chemical engineer by degree but thanks to bits i had the uh, luxury to live my life as a student as a mechanical engineer uh, being part of you know the inspired carders team so i think i spent most of my time in the boiler room that we used to call it where we had uh, the cars being built and the workshops uh, uh, in bits where you know we made the components and assembled everything together uh more than i attended uh, you know chemical engineering courses as such so um uh, yeah been a me- chemical engineer by degree but mechanical engineer from heart that's what uh, has been my life at bits um and uh, through through the years of building cars you know uh, i think together we built close to two or three cars per year or so put together six to eight cars through the three four years that uh, we were part of the team and uh you know these we you know uh, we built them in the same space shared tools together uh, shared ideas design concepts um to even you know going together on uh, work trips to get uh, stuff from all the way from delhi and hisar and the nearby places selling, together. selling t- together yeah. and selling t-shirts in the you know uh, the mess signings uh, together so we did all of that stuff uh, as part of inspired cars i think that's what carried uh, us towards you know uh, having this idea in common uh after college and uh, yeah that, that's the crux of it yeah and, and i think to carry from there uh, uh while we were in this competitions uh, that you know when we build the cars and go there a lot of these judges uh, usually belong to uh, uh you know the automotive companies from mercedes or the jaj or wherever they come from and those are the people who sort of question you on your designs and everything and uh, that was like kind of like the first layer of confidence that you know that you're building something really good that sometimes even the engineers who are asking you questions from these automotive companies wouldn't quite understand obviously you know not their area of specialization but at least a sense of confidence in you that you know you are right up there with them and then eventually after college we all got placed in different different companies uh, some of my i wasn't a part of automotive company i was in a refrigeration company um and uh, but but we all kind of kept in touch and everything obviously first year after college and and i and i think like you know it was building up uh, a lot of changes happened in that particular year because what we expected uh, to work in these companies what sort of work we expected was not at all innovative or um, revolutionary we just felt like you know you have all these resources you have all these people uh, and and you just build something very marginal uh, uh, that wasn't really 
uh, what kept us exciting and this experience was shared across automotive uh, engineers as well like, like what other people some of my friends in automotive companies as well and um, that's where we kind of like got together uh, in Hyderabad itself and we would meet up like once every month or something like that to discuss about this and eventually over multiple ideas and all of that stuff we eventually fine-tune this but but mostly motivation comes from the fact that um, there was a lot of money in the market um, that the people were willing to fund uh, electric vehicle companies uh, the confidence in us that we could build something in us by ourselves an automotive product by ourselves um, you know combine this with like the the passion uh, that we had and it was once in a century opportunity as well so all of those things kind of like uh, came together and, and that's how we got started uh, about a year after we uh, graduated hmm. sounds good uh, uh, <clears throat> it sounds like uh, inspired Carters uh, was the glue that kind of like put uh, you know kept you guys together and eventually led to the to the birth of race so yeah yeah I'm yeah, did, yeah uh, go ahead. Did, did Nivya also have like an overlap with both of them while you were at Pilani like had you heard of Inspired Carters while you were there as well? Oh, yeah, I've heard about it. They they had a team in Pilani campus too. Which I batch so. were you? 14 to 18. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So just one year. Just one year. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's quite nice. So we'd like to know a bit more about now, you know, your specific roles in the, in, in, in the Inspired Carters team when you joined. So how was that? Like, do you like start off with a specific role and then grew into something else or like could you describe to us what the experience there was like um, so inspired carters uh, has this little backstory because uh, so we have these book pops and book moms culture in bits right so my book pop happened to be a chemical engineer who was part of inspired carters so something i would uh, i wanted to do because I love building cars and stuff like that. So, uh, unfortunately, there were there were two teams: uh, the Formula Student team and the Baha team, which made two different kinds of cars. And uh, unfortunately, I couldn't take the first test for uh, you know the Formula Student team where Arun uh, took it, and I think that's the last test he wrote, <laughs> and uh, he got in. And uh, so this book pop of mine, uh, you know, he came down and he was like, oh, why didn't you take this test? Uh, there's this team uh, which makes cars and stuff. Why don't you give it, give an attempt to the next team, the other team that's there. So um, that the test happened to happen, happen I think, uh, a week apart. And uh, I missed the first one and then happened to give the second one and got through uh, into the team. Uh, th that was a story behind me getting into the team, you know, being a chemical engineer, but I didn't know what exactly to do uh, in the uh, first year uh, at BIT. So, and then once I got in is when, you know, um, I got to know the entire team, all the uh, seniors in the team, you know, put me in uh, different subsystems in the first year where I worked with uh, multiple different uh, sub teams inside Inspired Carters. Uh, uh, you know, handling vehicle dynamics, suspension systems, uh, you know, fabrication and all of that. And um, uh, so we took the cars to, uh, you know, the events around India, um, you know, where uh, the Baha uh, events happened. And uh, going forward into the second and third years is when I uh, we became seniors in the team. And uh, that's when I took up more of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, responsibilities in specific teams were mainly vehicle dynamics and uh, you know uh, also taken uh, took care of the entire fabrication systems um, of the Baha team so uh, coordinating with all the design units uh, you know coordinating with the machine shops and uh, workshop uh, getting the designs to reality is what was fascinating at that point of time and I took that up through my second and third years and I think um, in total, we built three, three, four different cars uh, through the three years uh, in the Baha side of things. So I was happy to, you know, take that forward along with my other friends, uh, you know, fabricating the designs, testing them and taking them forward. Yeah. And uh, I think I started so a little different in our, this thing that I was kind of directly thrusted into uh, power trade, uh, which is basically engines and and uh, assembling uh, the whole power train, which, uh, you know, your engine, your gearbox, your clutch, 
your turbocharger and all of those things. And uh, with us, I think it was, uh, so our side of the team, like the, the cars that we built were relatively new, like the whole team was relatively new uh, compared to Baja, which was much more structured. Um, and so, you know, we and, and then we had more flexibility in, in building things, like uh, the rules were much more looser. Uh, on our side and and uh, and so what that ended up was that like you know bits being bits and we would build a lot of ambitious projects and kind of fail at them uh, miserably <laughs> a lot of times and uh, yeah so I started off as a powertrain engineer turbo so we, we wouldn't get engines in India uh, like under 600 cc back in 2013 it was a very difficult there were like one or two engines and the 600 cc also was quite expensive uh, we didn't have the money to purchase it so we we went very ambitious about taking a small engine and trying to turbocharge it and and you know that getting it working almost took like two years with like three to four engineers just working on it and and inexperienced in engineers of course so the 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 sky was the limit but like you know it it was it was up to us how much we could achieve and how much we could make it meet uh, things were really difficult uh, to uh, get the, just putting the car together and making it work would would be a nightmare. Uh, all the systems coming alive would be difficult. Uh, it would take us good six to eight months just to uh, bring it alive. Uh, you know, those sort of issues were there. Uh, eventually, like I morphed into sort of like a team captain role. Uh, and then, uh, you know, our electronic system completely fell apart, like the team completely fell apart. So I picked up electronics as well as a sort of a side project along with the team captaincy. But I think what I... The biggest learning for me would be just to manage the team. Um, I think that was the most challenging part for me uh, because a lot of people with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, different uh, motives, different, uh, you know, obviously different focus as well, right? Like some see the team as a hobby, some want to focus more on the study, some take it very seriously, some want to stay over all, all over winter, some, you know, want to prepare for exams. So it was a, a lot of things to manage. Um, for me, that was the most... Uh, I wouldn't call it exciting, uh, but I would say that that was the most challenging part. Just to, for me, like if if everybody was working in the workshop, I had no work to do. Uh, so you know that that's how it was for me. So if everybody came to the workshop, everybody showed up at the workshop, I didn't have any work to do. So that was my uh, uh, sort of experience, and 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 I think eventually this kind of morphed out into what our roles are at at race as well. Um, I, I take care of the managing side of things. Gautam takes care of the technology side of things. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty much kind of how what sort of experiences we had back then. Very impressive. Uh, okay, so let us now talk a bit about uh, your life post Bits Pilani. So we can start with Gautam. Uh, so after Bits Gautam, you worked as a, a process engineer for Dr. Reddy's lab. So could you tell us a little bit about uh, what your role entailed and how did you pivot from there to co-founding Race uh, with Arun? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, during the placement uh, semester, I was the first one to get placed into a core chemical company. So I was pretty happy about that uh, at that point of time. Um, and uh, yeah, Dr. Reddy was a, is a huge, uh, you know, mammoth, pharmaceutical company right so uh like arun mentioned uh, there's not much uh innovation as such happening but there's a lot of work uh that have that we could learn from uh from all the processes that have been set up they've been operating for more than i know 30 40 odd years um and all the uh, you know processes streamlined and stuff like that so i uh, took up the role of you know uh a process engineer in the manufacturing and R&D uh, units uh, in Hyderabad. And uh, I was handling the uh, 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 cancer drugs that they were working with. And uh, it, it was a good experience in the sense, uh, learning a lot from, you know, the, the nearest age group of mine working in that, uh, in my group was, you know, uh, 15 years away from what I was 20, 21, 22 uh, when I joined the company. So uh, they carried in a lot of experience, but at the same time, they had, uh, they were stuck to what they had known at that point. So, you know, the, the, it, it had a lot of new things had to be pushed through with a lot of effort to make things happen. So at that point of time, um, you know, I did learn a lot from their experiences, from the experiences of the uh, entire industry as such. Um, and um, I felt I could be doing much more with what I could, uh, I learned from them. So, and and that's when all the uh, idea about race also uh, started forming and uh, we were always in touch. Uh, so 
um, carried that forward onto this and uh, uh, early uh, 2019-ish is when we started off uh, in, on the race project. Thank you. And uh, Arun, you had a slightly different experience, I guess. So we, we found online that you had also worked with um, ID Energy in Switzerland. So was that on-site or remote? And also, what was that experience like? And did, how did that shape up uh, your kind of, you know, how did that shape your insights into race as well going forward? No, I, so that was my, uh, you know, sort of off-campus thesis. So I wrapped up my, like, Degree in three years. Uh, obviously, bit allows a flexibility to it. Not not that I excelled in 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 uh, in these subjects, but just like uh, completed quickly. Took the summer term as well in third year. And I, Pilani heat is you get to know Pilani heat in, in if you stay the summer over there, and it was crazy. So uh, completed that, and and because I'd got this offer that like you know you could I could work in Zurich, and and uh, that was quite interesting. Uh, obviously, like at that age, to to work for a year in 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 a different country and that too in in Zurich is 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 quite exciting, and uh, that also took a lot of uh, challenge because our department, the mechanical department, wouldn't give uh, off campus theses uh, for anybody to leave campus and just do like a thesis for one year. That wasn't allowed. Um, so I took you know it took me about like two months to get it resolved and and uh, make it work. Eventually, I went there sometime in october um uh, and uh, but i think i think the most uh, obviously it was more of a research uh, in a in a different field of uh, uh, broadly psychrometry but like you can take it comes under refrigeration air conditioning and so similar kind of role that i've done but uh, uh, i think that's where but but i think the most interesting part i've learned from there is the is the work culture um i think uh you know just working with someone um you know in a developed country where there's like you know a lot of work like balance uh and my boss also was like super cool uh it was a completely different experience uh it was also my first job technically and then uh you know tuned back into india when i worked in johnson controls were completely different experience but i think i think I've, I've been inspired by by my boss over there uh, quite a lot um uh, i think the style of working the way of working is what really impacted me the most and of course like you know personally learned a lot uh, being independent and cooking uh, among other things uh, is you know something that i've learned but uh, yeah eventually after that i worked in in johnson controls uh, in pune um again for a year uh, this is what i got placed uh, initially uh, early days of my 41 uh, but but yeah, so this this kind of again uh, helped me to see what was being built in the company. Um, I, again, I I could draw parallels whether it's to my work in Switzerland or whether it's to my work in 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 college in Pilani. Both were way more innovative. Both were like you know um, even the work in Switzerland that I did was like super super uh, in like new. The the plant wasn't even ready, and we're trying to build it something like that. And and you know these people are at it uh, figuring out how it would work and everything. Was something really revolutionary. It would convert waste into ethanol uh, that you could use in your, you know, just as your regular fuel. Um, and back, come back to MNCs here in India, and you're you're doing very basic level work. You have such resources and everything that that sort of frustration builds in you that you know at least you as a person are capable more than this. Uh, and then you can. So at the same time, we would, as I said, we would meet up and think about ideas to start. I think the inspiration was to start something of our own. Um, uh, even before we had, had the idea for race, we have we had quit our jobs. So that was the commitment that we had to build something by ourselves, even though we didn't have a proper idea by then, but but we still resigned no matter what. And if, the idea eventually uh, uh, took its shape in the first uh, six months to 12 months uh, after we quit our jobs. So, so that's how uh, it, it got started. That is That is very inspiring. Um... So uh, both of you seem to have pursued your core engineering uh, fields to a large extent, which is which is quite rare. Happy to know that I also fall into that category. Uh, anyway, so how do you keep up with the technicalities of the industry? Uh, I, I think I'm still in the technical side of things because I'm still handling all the tech stuff at race. Uh, uh, one addition to that is, you know, now it is not just chemical engineering, it's mechanical firmware, software, and, uh, you know, fabrication, manufacturing, and all of that stuff. So, um, 
still have to do the same basic stuff uh, in a different way to make our products stand out in the market. And uh, you know, uh, now we're not making prototypes or you know uh, uh, event-based uh, uh, vehicles anymore. So we are making automotive products directly being used by you know people uh, around the country. So um, keeping up with the standards, we uh, you know we are also part of. Uh, all the industry associations specifically for battery swapping uh, and also automotive associations where we collaborate with multiple other industry stakeholders where we learn a lot from them as well uh, in terms of what's going on and uh, you know we try to integrate a lot of uh, new tech as well inside our products to keep it far ahead of what the competition is at uh, at this point of time so um, that's that's something that uh, consistently requires um, you know research uh, right in, within race as well as uh, you know collaborating with others and discussing a lot of these uh, through the years last few years of uh, how we've been building up the product so uh, uh, I am constantly in touch with whatever uh, heat transfer and uh, you know tra transport phenomena and all that courses that I've done in bits I'm still doing that for my battery packs uh, that we're building in race so in that aspect um, still in touch with all the tech stuff yeah I, I think I think I think the uh... Uh, the question is a little wrong if you yeah, don't mind me but i i would say we're not keeping up with it but we're pushing it uh so right. we are at the forefront of it uh others are have to keep up with us uh that's the difference uh whatever gautam said is also you know we are literally defining the standards and everything so we are in the panels of li literally whatever rules are going to come out and stuff like that so uh every every work that we do is is literally pushing the boundaries of whatever is possible in this in this field and in this segment uh, and yeah, and that's what a lot of effort uh, goes into uh, things. And we have a significant technology advantage comparing to other com comp companies and competitors. A lot of them, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, technology kind of like behind uh, as our old older technology in that sense. And just to uh, continue on on that, you know, front, um, do you also collaborate actively with research institutes, or um, is this something that? you kind of do solo and go in the direction of patents rather than also actively having research collaboration. As you said, you push the frontiers of technology in your end. Right? Just got them. Uh, uh, I think I lost you. So uh, we, we don't collaborate with technology uh, research institutes, but we do have uh, a lot of collaborations with in uh, universities where uh, you know there is research happening um, uh, on battery specific tech or uh, anything new that's coming up so uh, including bits we had uh, quite a few uh, collaborations where we did basic research projects uh, that is something we do but uh, the large part of all the new stuff that we build the innovative stuff we are building on the uh, you know vehicles and as well as the batteries um, is mostly within Ray. So we have our own uh, dedicated teams that work on building stuff from scratch. Uh, so that's something we uh, are proud of. And uh, we continue doing that with all the technology that we build, uh, be it a small, uh, you know, electronics hardware device that, uh, you know, IoT device that goes into the battery or the entire battery pack itself, which is a complex, uh, you know, uh, structure to be built uh, with all the uh, different subsystems going in. So um, we do collaborate with universities and students across uh, who are researching this, but most of it comes uh, in-house. That's, that's how it's structured. I see. Quite cool. Okay. So then I guess we can move on to race now specifically we learned about the conception of race energy in the course of this discussion so i'll jump into first trying to understand what were the largest sort of hurdles or challenges that you faced in kind of building race to where it is today and why did you choose to base it out of hyderabad okay i can understand the initial conception happening in hyderabad but then what was the reason why you know hyderabad was was the headquarters I think it was just uh, easier to build out of here everything. We both probably, by the way, uh, from Hyderabad in, in some sense, uh, I would like to think that Gautam calls Hyderabad as home. Uh, yeah, I've but, been here for like 17, 18 odd years, so I'm more than semi-Hyderabadi, so I've been here long. Yeah, I think, I think um, even though we were based out of Hyderabad, if we had to build something like this in Bangalore, uh, I think that connect 
with the local auto driver would be uh, difficult um, if you don't speak the local language. Uh, it would have been hard to understand their problems. Uh, it would have been hard to, uh, you know, figure out what needs to be done. And, and I think a large part of our first few months was just to talk to as many drivers as possible. Um, try to understand like what, what their requirements are, what their specifications are, why are they doing, why are they using this vehicle, why are they using that fuel, what do they think of uh, battery and all of that stuff. Um, hurdles uh, coming to hurdles. Obviously, it's it's it's, it's been a massive, uh, 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 massively challenging technology to build. I think technology side, maybe Gautam can answer it. But if I if I have to talk to talk about more on the other side of things, obviously, uh, raising first uh, raising money has been pretty challenging in this in this sector because uh, EVs and hardware generally don't sit well with uh, investors. Uh, it's it's there's there's just a fraction of investors who invest. And India is also not really that much of a, I would say India is just still like, you know, it's it's lagging slightly uh, compared to like a Western European or, or US based investors. Um, even they started very recently, right? It's been only five, 10 years since they started investing in hardware and climate tech. India is just catching up right now in that sense. So it's still a bit early uh, because we, uh, you know, success stories are yet to come out in this, in this space. Um, so it's been, it's been difficult uh, to raise money. That's number one. Uh, then you know the moment we got our first check as well uh, COVID hit us like barely 45 days into us receiving money and then ever since then uh, you know we've had uh, three waves of COVID uh, you know and a couple of wars to go along with it and everything basically affects our supply chains and all of that stuff so it's been it's been uh, challenging on on that side and then also we started with different different ideas uh, getting sort of regulations uh, to be in line with those uh, uh, products or ideas that we're building is, is an ongoing work. It, it'll it'll just keep on going forever. And uh, we just find ways to kind of uh, make the bare minimum happen in terms of regulation side, be it, uh, you know, retrofits or be it permits, uh, be it subsidy for uh, swapping, uh, just like, you know, swapping being recognized uh, as a, as a legit, uh, you know, platform for vehicles to be sold. Uh, these are all constant work. Uh, it's it's a never ending kind of work that keeps on happening. Requires a lot of push uh, to just streamline your activity. I think just today there's a Ken article uh, talking about this very thing, same thing. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, these these are probably the challenges that uh, especially I face, like you know, on, on the or like we faced on the on the on the non technical uh, side of things. Uh, and uh, to add to that, you know, on the technical side. COVID was a big uh, hit because uh, for everyone, for every industry, but very specific to us because uh, we were building hardware, deep tech hardware uh, uh, back then. Uh, and we needed to be hands on with, you know, testing them, bringing the boards uh, up to, you know, assembling the components and testing them. Uh, we were in the initial R&D uh, design and development phase, right? So. Um, and we couldn't be there in the lab doing that, and th th that probably uh, you know delayed the entire process of getting you know uh, uh, finalized products uh, out onto the field. And uh, post COVID, uh, like Arun mentioned, uh, the supply chains were hit uh, uh, to the extent that few of the critical components would have lead times of 52 weeks, meaning I will get the components one year after placing orders for them. So that is something given our, uh, you know, timelines and budgets that we work with as an early stage startup back then, um, uh, couldn't be done. So those, those were huge challenges in building the product itself. And uh, adding to that was, you know, the wars that came uh, uh, after that, after COVID and, uh, you know, uh, getting the product right first time that to the kind of innovative products that we build uh, with the features and tech that goes into it. Um, we do a lot of fast iterative uh, processes, our iterative process, uh, uh, iterations run through uh, once in every uh, one and a half to two months. So we couldn't keep up with that pace because of uh, these uh, interruptions from the outside. And uh, since then we've been trying to uh, you know, stay ahead of whatever uh, uh, that can affect the entire process as such, including regulations. Um, you know, even when the stringent regulations for battery uh, swapping and battery uh, safety came up, we were actually the first ones to uh, clear that last year. So um, we've, we've tried to be ahead uh, since then, but yeah, th these were major roadblocks or like uh, hindrances uh, along the journey of uh, building the tech. 
yeah i mean i mean good to know that even after facing so many challenges you guys stayed on track and uh eventually you're getting recognized for that so a uh, big deal uh yeah so uh so who are some of your key clients at the moment and how do you envision the future uh, of your company um key clients are obviously the drivers um so there are hundreds of them uh and, and it's a very b2c kind of uh, company that we're building uh, at least at this moment um and so um just like any other automotive company uh, you can imagine as like bajaj or mahindra or anything like that uh, selling auto rickshaws to customers uh, which run on a battery swapping uh, platform so it it's it's a uh, uh, in its way it's, it it has its own challenges and and at the same time we are also a very product uh, driven company so uh, we kind of uh, uh, you know the the product kind of leads the way to make the sale happen uh, because it's a very unique combination um in 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 that sense um yeah but right now we're kind of uh, uh, focused in in hyderabad uh, we just uh, started in in uh, delhi and cr as well uh, and we have our uh swap stations um in in both the cities uh we also sort of like have uh, key partners i would say um from hpcl to bpcl uh where we set up our swap stations uh some of our uh, if you want to call it like a b2b customer we have rapido uh, uh who use our uh, auto rickshaws on their platform um so these are some of the the key partners uh, slash in a way certain certain way customers besides our our um sort of b2c uh, drivers um in terms of like vision and everything um obviously we want to sort of build uh, the world's largest battery swapping technology uh, battery swapping network uh, and and the way we want to do it is 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 by building also uh, some of the best uh, swapping technology available out there in the market uh, we believe that that would help us sort of not just scale the network but also make uh you know business sense to all the players uh, involved everybody from the driver who would see a value proposition to using this compared to a, a cng vehicle or even a fixed battery uh, charging electric vehicle to a station operator or station franchisee who sort of uh, uh, opposes these stations um so everybody kind of like get their own value proposition or makes business sense to all the all the partners and our customers who are part of this ecosystem and and uh, we hope that like sort of improving technology and and you know uh, deploying better and better tech over the years is going to sort of uh, make us uh, get there uh, so that's uh, broadly what we sort of envision uh, to see the company become i see so uh, so what makes a uh, race stand apart uh, from its competitors um so firstly we are we're kind of like a full stack uh, solution um we basically uh, do both ends of the or like say both sides of the coin uh, which is one side we we also sort of focus on selling the vehicles uh, the auto rickshaws uh, and and on the other side uh, where these vehicles are on on swappable batteries we also build the swapping infrastructure uh, required for uh, uh, making these vehicles obviously uh, run um this full stack nature that you know the 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 both the petrol and the vehicle is coming from one company uh like think of it like an indian oil and a bajaj put together an indian oil and maruti put together uh in obviously a, a smaller sense right now uh in but but this integration uh because the the petrol is now a battery um it's a, it's a much more uh technology asset oriented kind of a, a component um it it this this full stack integration allows us to have better control over over our customers over our uh, uh you know so addressing the demand that we have over the network uh, that we're setting up stations a lot of things uh in terms of just the product integration as well because they're all integrated under one roof uh multiple components it just gives overall better uh, and better better efficiencies for everybody like i said uh, involved in this whole uh, ecosystem so that really makes us stand out uh, from our competitors and and uh, uh, we're building this company in a very different way uh, compared to the other uh, uh, companies out there uh, and hopefully yeah, that that will pay uh, you know uh, pay us out in the future uh, is what we are hoping for That sounds great and what's your current team size 
how many members are part of Lake? Uh, we have about 140, 150 people uh, in our team right now. I see. Very so, cool. And what is yeah. the hiring process like? Like, do you do you now not look hiring. for? <laughs> We're not hiring for right mechanical. now. <laughs> but in general, <laughs> when you date like college graduates, mechanical engineering was a requirement, or like just curious no, because. Yeah. It depends. Uh, it depends on like what we are hiring for. We have different uh, uh, department. I, I wouldn't call it departments, but you have obviously different roles and everything. You have the R and D team within R and D team. You have different fields of engineering. You have the business team, um, sales for different products and different uh, kinds of sales. You have the partnership um, side as well on the business side of things. You have the operations team. You have the manufacturing team. Um, so I think at least on on a, on uh, for this kind of. Uh, uh, call i think what's relevant is on the engineering side so uh, uh you know we have uh we do hire from uh depending on like we we have stayed out of college we have interns we we take like lateral hires we take like you know uh people who have experience it's all it, it's all across the uh, uh field so uh there's no particular uh thing like that it just de depends on the requirement that we have and if they have the right skill set uh it, it's fine with us Okay, that sounds great. So to end this segment, I think in one line, if you had to kind of tell a lay person why they should choose Ace Energy, what would that one line pitch be? Uh, it's, it's usually a much more important decision for a driver uh, to take our vehicle. One line never does the job. But uh, uh, if you want a cheaper uh, vehicle, uh there's the cheapest vehicle actually in the three wheeler segment with also the cheapest running costs without ever having to worry about your battery being the life or warranty uh it's an unlimited warranty that we give you uh then look no further than uh, uh race energy that's what uh in translated in telugu or hindi would be our pitch to the customer <laughs> yeah, that sounds that sounds nice yeah <laughs> i think they may buy it especially if you harp on also the fact that it's eco-friendly and like you said, cheap. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now I think let's switch gears. We also, since you guys are like experts in your area, we wanted some of your insights on the future of uh, EV in India overall, and of course the state of the art at, the, at this point, like what India can do as a country to improve as well, the EV infrastructure and so on. Um, so to begin with, we wanted to know, um, how does EV, uh, India's current EV infrastructure uh, development compare to, let's say, USA's, um, you know, uh, particularly, let's say, Tesla's supercharger network in the States? So how would you compare the current state in India to, to Tesla? I think I think the, the US infrastructure is also not there yet. Um, I think it's only California, uh, which has, I mean, usually most of the cities do have it, but if you visit Texas, um, Dallas or any of these cities, you you won't find a lot of EVs over there. Um, it's mostly California which is leading the way, um, uh, and and within California also, I think I think most electric vehicle drivers or owners are usually the ones who can who have an independent house uh, uh, and can put install a charger uh, at their home and do overnight charging. I don't think anybody relies on on fast charging uh, solely. It's it will be a pain. Uh, to live with having uh, i've had that experience personally so it, it, if you don't have an access to a charger right at your home it's really difficult to manage or live with an ev um and at the same time i think i think so us is also not out there there are a lot of challenges with the whole entire electric vehicle um, uh, industry in itself um, and india is obviously way far behind uh, even though we do have infrastructure in, in a lot of places in in the cities mostly they do not work uh, typically um, and it's it's been a pain for a lot of uh, drivers to do it so right now whoever's buying electric vehicles typically fall usually on the private side uh, where they can afford to have a charger installed at their home very similar to what it's in the us and and even within india you have a lot of issues with the society not allowing you to set up charger and again um, be it us or india uh, they not, not, like majority of them don't rely solely on public infrastructure to, to uh, support their charging, only in emergency case, so if they're doing long distances where they rely on it. Um, this is where we kind of uh, stepped in with our solution. And uh, if, if this is a solution like you, if this is the problem that you and I are facing, 
imagine what an auto driver or what a speaky zomato driver would face because uh, if you can't set up a charger in your society what would they set up in their you know houses or slums that they're living in and uh, we don't have to charge it every day we can charge once a week and we're good like you know you do uh, 20 kilometers a day or 15 miles a day or 30 miles a day that's enough and you'll you'll you do like you'll last for a year with one full one one week for with one full charge but the drivers wouldn't uh, last more than a day with one full charge so it was a problem of not having good electricity uh, uh, infrastructure for these drivers and club it with uh, the fact that they have to charge it way more often uh, you combine it and then you see a lot of uh, problems that are there and you're already seeing early signs of saturation in certain segments of electric vehicles that electric vehicles are not able to sell more uh, and you're seeing a slowdown and this is where we come in uh, if if today's solutions can offer you uh, you know can offer to about 25 percent of the customer base we are trying to address the remaining 75 percent of the customer base because we are very similar to your gas filling or your petrol uh, filling experience um, so that's what, uh, uh, in a way, kind of like leading, hopefully, uh, this this industry uh, to to its next uh, step. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, so, so being in the U.S. and also a Tesla owner, I know that uh, uh, the government in the U.S. is introducing, uh, you know, initiatives like uh, federal tax credits or state-specific tax rebates, or you know, just investing in the in the infrastructure, charging infrastructure to drive market growth in the space. So, um, what do you think is Indian government uh, doing at the moment, or uh, or you know, has been doing uh, to increase uh, the EV adoption in India? Um, so. Um... You know, there's obviously the fame subsidy, um, uh, which is the biggest, you know, it's equivalent to the credits uh, that you get there uh, in the US. But uh, fame subsidy has been a lot of a good advantage to uh, to customers buying vehicles, um, given that they're discounts and, you know, there's generally up to 25, 30% cheaper than what you would have to pay, sort of bringing that parity uh, between uh, IC engine vehicles and electric vehicles uh, in terms of cost uh, to purchase. So obviously that is, has been the biggest uh, step forward. And I think a lot of manufacturers did come ahead and man started manufacturing electric vehicles because of this subsidy. So it it, it generally initiated the whole um, uh, industry forward here in India. Um, and uh, it also, you know, uh, kick-started the whole revolution here in India in that sense. Um, that's on the vehicle side, and and obviously, um, it, it's kind of getting aged now. I think it's about uh, time. Fame Fame Three subsidy is also going to come out uh, uh, soon, um, and and you know that's uh, that's where I think I think Gautam's here as well. Yeah. Did sorry, you hear my... that question? Yeah. Did no. you hear that question, Gautam? No, no, no. Uh, support from the government in terms of subsidies and credits, uh, both on vehicle and I addressed the I said the vehicle side on uh, uh, fame. If you want to uh, add something on the infra side, uh, uh, on uh, the support that's being given by the government. Right. Yeah. So I think the first step was to you know get battery swapping recognized as a on paper. Uh, that was the first uh, struggle that we were going through along with the entire industry as such because. Everyone was aware of what a fixed battery uh, solution was and uh, the battery swapping concept itself was very new uh, three or four years back. And uh, only last uh, year, early last year when is when uh, you know battery swapping was mentioned on uh, you know a standard that could be followed by uh, uh, you know test agencies and industry uh, as a whole. And uh, since then, I think there's been a lot of push to, uh, drive policies and uh, drive subsidies that could put both fixed batteries and battery swapping on a level playing field. And uh, that, that's still an ongoing uh, process with the government. And I think uh, the battery swapping policy is uh, 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 being drafted right now. We are part of the discussions that uh, who, who's uh, drafting these uh, policies. And I think we're expecting that to come out uh, sometime uh, this year. And the policy will then drive uh, more push from the government in terms of, uh, you know, subsidies and uh, extending other incentives, uh, what is already available for fixed EVs towards battery swapping. So that's something we're looking forward to. Yeah, hopefully that change comes up like soon. 
uh, also from policy side because once they agree i think a lot of things get streamlined and easy to implement okay and right. finally we wanted to know i think some of the potential you know um economic impacts of transitioning into evs firstly and secondly also a shift in people's mindset like i think even today it's a bit hard for people to very readily adopt ev at least in india abroad i think the culture is changing like in germany where i am at um, we have the green party which actively pushes for these kind of you know changes um, so that helps a lot but i think in india that's still not the case so um basically economic impacts of transitioning into evs and also what can be done to kind of change people's mindsets also towards this i think um uh, uh, economic impact is 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 kind of uh, uh is what is under question usually uh, for the people's uh, mindset to change it um a lot of people are definitely buying it uh, i think i think it depends from segment to segment of, of course like you know when you look at four wheeler you start with the very top uh, it's usually mostly for the uh, the four wheelers is a lot of it is driven by uh, the the tech aspect of it uh, you're driving something cool and obviously it has environmental aspect to it the the economics of it don't really matter at that particular uh, in that particular segment it's most mostly from a conscience and obviously you want to uh, most electric vehicles offer better uh, technology when it comes to interiors and all of those things much cooler um and then you come down into two wheelers uh, which i think the trend still follows but I, i i you see a little bit of the economics of it and and even before that even within the four wheelers you have the whole commercial taxi uh, segment again over there uh, you don't have like the regular ubers and olas using it uh, you have the fleets which defi- which have a defined path or which have a defined um uh, you know time and shifts that that operate uber and ola slowly adopting it as well with uh, uber green and and you know all of these coming up in india um and then you come down to like the two wheeler segment is also very similar um it's a you know beat ola or ether or any of these uh, companies it's it's a far more technologically advanced uh, uh, scooter so a lot of people buy it for it but there's also a lot of economic sense also that's kicking in into uh, into users that you know it's cheaper to buy it's cheaper to use uh, overall and all of those things uh, people start doing that math uh, more over here and then on and on the commercial side as well to wheel a commercial which is your zoom zomato swiggy deliveries you have a lot of companies popping up uh, which are trying to uh, you know lease out vehicles to these drivers uh, to kind of like who come in the middle ground and help solve the whole total cost of ownership and break it down into much more uh, day to day basis kind of like a transactional basis for these uh, zomato uh, swiggy users and in three wheelers uh, again it's been a leader in a lot of these segments uh, when it comes to the low speed uh, three wheelers which have been 100% electric since the beginning and uh, now you have a three wheeler um, the the high speed three wheelers which is what we typically use or or see on a day to day basis these are gradually becoming electric uh, it's seen a very steep uh, growth rate um, to like about 15 to 16% of the total sales within 3 to 4 years so in in certain in 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 these segments in it's it's actually leading um, uh, segment like if you look at cargo uh, auto rickshaws the goods auto rickshaws that you call it but 25% of the total sales are electric which is much higher than some of the other segments in other developed parts of the world uh, so you have you do have certain segments in india which are uh, you know pulling way ahead of of uh, other segments I'm, i'm not comparing apple to apple but you know when the scope is there when the when the things fall in place uh, uh, india is kind of um, taking uh, huge strides in in sort of having that uh, penetration and in, in capturing the market uh, so that that is happening uh, in a lot of these segments see yeah okay nithya any other questions in this segment or should we I think uh, we are good uh, we can switch to a uh, rapid fire round it's the fun okay. segment so, yeah um we have separate rapid fire for each of you so um this is just a quick round we have uh, i think five questions for each of you and we basically want quick answers um whatever is the first thing that comes to your mind so uh, i guess we'll start with gautam um okay, okay so The first question is um what hobby helps you recharge and stay creative 
uh, sorry what 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 hobby uh, helps you recharge and stay creative oh uh, okay that's easy so i play a lot of sports so uh, i play cricket uh, quite often with uh, you know i play tournaments local tournaments in hyderabad so that is something that uh, keeps my mind free from all the work stuff that happens and once i'm back from the game it's uh, you know 100% charged full ready to go okay um next one is uh, which mentor has had the greatest impact on your career if you had to name one person um i can't name one person but a lot of people uh, through uh, you know uh, right from college where i had my seniors like i mentioned uh, in the team that we worked in uh, to you know dr reddies where i had a couple of great uh, seniors i worked under uh, you know um, uh, senior vice presidents at uh, the ph- uh, pharmaceutical firm um they taught me a lot in terms of uh, you know work life and uh, you know uh, work ethic as such so i think quite a few people uh, don't want to name anyone but yeah these few individuals okay um what's the most valuable lesson you've learned in the startup world something that was kind of really surprising to you uh not really surprising very valuable lesson is just to keep going uh, i think that's one thing um that comes to you when you're uh, at it day in day out uh, building new stuff so i think not giving up and keep going uh, to figure stuff out is something uh, not a surprise but yeah something that comes to you when you're building stuff okay and if your life was a movie what would the title be if my life was a movie it would probably be iron man 0 but uh, uh, yeah okay. that's, that's probably my Okay, cool. And finally, what makes Gotham race? Uh, I, I, your voice broke. What, what What makes Gotham race? Uh, passion to make cool new stuff. I guess. Okay, very cool. All right, it's Arun's turn. Uh, so your first question is: What's your daily routine like as a founder in the EV industry? This is rapid fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like uh, I'll take like the 20 minutes to explain. But it depends I think I think you know uh, normally just like uh, early to office uh, typically there I mean not early by European standards I know it's, it's but I am usually uh, on on a good day uh, there at 8 o'clock or something I like to get like a couple of hours uh, before everybody comes in and then yeah your work starts with like some early morning meetings and then uh la- around lunch time is a bit more free just to your work and everything and then i set up meetings in 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 late afternoon typically um starting from 3 can go up to like 5 6 something like that and and depending on the day uh depending on the uh, you know time of the uh, year over the 4 to 5 years we've stayed all all night till like 12 or even all nighters as well uh can come back sometime you know 6 7 as well so it really varies from uh the time of the year uh, it, it, there's nothing specific sometimes you're clocking a uh, very hectic hour sometimes you have more relaxed uh, work life balance as they would call it so i wouldn't say it's all all grind but they they kind of like phases of of both uh, happening here and there yeah to see so next question which book or movie has influenced your entrepreneurial journey the most um a controversial one i think would be uh, um uh, elon musk um the the first one um i didn't read the second one yet but the first one has been quite inspirational and i'm and, you know obviously this was way before he kind of had uh, turned into something that we are not really uh, liking him but i think the early years like early 2000s and uh, the end of 2000s was something very inspirational tesla as a whole and him as a whole uh, uh, the person who who is just uh, uh, aiming for the unthinkable uh, uh, and actually i think you know whatever he's doing right now we should still um, you know uh, it's because of him the electric vehicles are happening uh, if you have to put the entire revolution to one person is is just him uh, and and the same thing he's doing to space tech as well you could never think of electric vehicles you would never think of privatization of of space tech and and it's all because of him so yeah that's the one book uh, that's definitely changed yeah right uh, what's the best advice you have ever received as a leader ah uh, 
best advice will be hard to uh, put it out. I, I mean, it'll hard to uh, pin it down to one, but uh, um, typically I think, I think uh, uh, we are also good actors in that sense, because uh, no matter how much stress or uh, uh, burnout or whatever we are facing, whatever uh, mental issues, uh, mental health issues we have, we you always are expected to put up a good face and, and uh, show up in the office uh, because that kind of like depends on the, uh, you know, the morale kind of, uh, trickles down from there so um that i think is a is the uh, and somebody told me like you know learning to do that will will you know you have to learn to do that much early in your life um, um uh, to to learn how to uh, control these uh, uh emotions and and then still show up right and i think uh both one person very close to me and and also uh like as a mentor sort of a thing and also i think we've heard this in uh in three idiots uh you know how he shows up at work every day so in, in that, that sense yeah that that's been a, a good point yeah okay i agree uh what's your guilty pleasure <laughs> <laughs> ah what's what's parliamentary it's uh i think i think uh uh uh, the racing probably I'll put it like that um, just going karting or something like that uh, spend uh, we shouldn't be spending so much money uh, but just like uh, yeah uh, doing that to just uh, burn out your um, stress or whatever it is to uh, in, in in racing uh, I've been a uh, generally like we said like the entire motorsports and all of the stuff the race so we do and we do keep going karting now it's very like it's lesser but earlier we used to do more often uh, but that just kind of it's like a went out uh, in a way uh, for your body so uh, that that's that's yeah that's good yeah nice uh, so the final question of this round what makes arun race um i think uh, <laughs> arun makes a race um it's it's difficult to answer that question i'm thinking uh yeah, I think I think in in terms of uh, uh, just uh, you know the, the the building of the product, I, I obviously Gautam has got more to do with it. Uh, I've sort of had a uh, I think more culture. That's why the, the reason why I'm thinking so much is obviously more culture trickles down from Gautam than me uh, because it's it's a heavy R and D, and we're not yet at least not yet a heavy business uh, sort of company. Uh, but but yeah, I think I think just the passion to uh, uh, I would say just the passion to get things done. Um, uh, it's it's we've always had that in our DNA to kind of uh, uh, no matter what the budget is. I think building things um, with a very minimal budget. Uh, obviously, Gautam, uh, you know, is is kind of responsible for a lot of it. But it's it's from the days in in Pilani till now, uh, uh, we've always been uh, working on tight and limited budgets. But despite that, uh, just with the limited budget, you still build great and amazing products. I think that is a lot, uh, not just me, but with Gautam as well. That DNA has trickled into the company um, because 4 crores, 40 crores, 400 crores, 4,000 crores, you, no amount of money is never enough to build a product. Uh, so we, behind, we kind of like, you know, try to keep it as limited as possible and, and you know, uh, build whatever best we can within the budget uh, that we have. Um, so that's part of our company uh, right now. Okay, good to know that. Okay, so I think uh, we can't end this interview without addressing the elephant in the room, which is of 30 under 30. So if you could briefly describe what that announcement was like and were you expecting it? Um, I think it was like, for me at least, it was just a, a dream kind of come true. I think secretly always wanted to be uh, uh, part of that list. Uh, whatever we, we were doing, I think was... Uh, especially, you know, you kind of do end up comparing that whether you're capable or not to get into that list. And we we always felt like, you know, we could definitely make into the list someday. And uh, yeah, one day we applied and, and then uh, we just got a message saying that like, you know, got selected to semifinals and all of that stuff. And then they didn't tell us like, you know, they said like, we'll find out only on the day it gets published. So we had no idea. And then that happened. Obviously, I was... Uh, uh, you know, pinching myself whether it really happened or not, and and then, and then yeah, that that happened was was very very exciting. I think even till uh, till today, I I haven't yet it hasn't sunk in yet completely. Um, 
because obviously you forget it and move on things like that but once in a while it keep, keeps coming back to you uh, that this you made it and then you know uh, and you still get that sort of uh, good uh, feeling uh, within you yeah and got and, uh, i think it's in general uh, 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 a recognition of sorts obviously and i know a uh, pat on the back saying yeah this is something what you're doing is uh, you know actually valuable to what uh, everyone in the world is looking forward to right so um, this just makes uh, things a little easy for us to you know uh, take take more further steps forward make better stuff uh, in the future so i think in that regard it's um, uh, it's a push from uh, everyone at forbes and every, everyone uh, in the jury who uh, you know evaluated us i guess I see. That sounds, yeah, amazing. I mean, we had to end on that note, right? So thank you so much for your time. You know, I know it must be really difficult making time, especially, you know, working the way you guys do. So really, thank you so much for joining. And it's really been a pleasure to get to know the two of you. And I wish you guys all the very best and hope to see race energy soar in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thanks a lot. Nice to host you.